It is so good to be with you this morning. Twenty years of ministry, and I've never been away from my church family at Christmas. God, to be honest with you, my heart was broken. But I praise God for Brother Clovis Amen. being available. I know he did a fine job for you guys. Thirty years of marriage, never been apart from my family on Christmas Day. Tell you what, it makes you appreciate little things that we so often may take for granted in life. But I am so glad to be with you today. And I say from the bottom of my heart, church family, thank you for all of your love, your expressions of love, the cards, the gifts, the food, the phone calls the text from the depths of my heart thank you for your expression of love to your pastor I didn't know whether to talk about Christmas or talk about New Year's <laughs> to be honest with you but uh, Lord finally settled my heart on a passage and a theme this morning and I did just simply entitle this Happy New Year. And I want to invite you to turn your Bibles this morning to the Gospel of John. John chapter 3. The Gospel of John chapter 3. Verse 1 through 5. Many of you are familiar with this story. It's when Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. And he had a life changing question for Jesus. And the word records in verse 1, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art said unto him, I'm sorry, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, in other words, truly, truly, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning for this opportunity to be together. Father, you know how dearly I miss it. And Father, I just pray for each and every one of us today, Father, that our hearts be full of your spirit. Father, that you just come and visit with us today and you just, Father, express your manifestation to us in such a powerful way. Father, that when we leave this place, we will know that we have been in the presence of the Lord. And Father, as we venture into this new year, Father, may we enter into it with gladness. 
problem of joy. The Father with you. Because that's what truly makes a happy new year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I guess that's the greeting for the season, right? Happy New Year. I mean, there's been countless greetings, you know, and greeting cards sent through the mails over the last few weeks. There's been all kind of salutations mentioned and celebrations that took place. But do you know that the new year is really not new? I mean, while thousands are going to shout, Happy New Year. They're going to awaken to the same old burdens as before. I mean, I know y'all don't think for a minute that COVID's just going to disappear, right? With a light switch. Your burdens and your heartaches just aren't going to just disappear with the flip of a switch. <clears throat> Our trials, our tribulations, just because the calendar flips over, doesn't mean that they're going to disappear. Instead of a happy new year, for many, it's going to be a terrible hangover. Now, I don't mean to be sad and to sound gloomy or anything like that this morning. I'm just simply trying to say there is no magic hour at midnight that suddenly ushers in utopia. It just doesn't happen that way. So the question we've got to ask ourselves this morning is what makes a new year happy? What makes a new year happy? The first thing I see in this text in chapter 3 of the Gospel of John is the new birth makes a new year happy. I mean, the necessity of the new birth, Jesus says plain and simple and clearly, except a man be born again in verse 3, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I mean, many have dreamed of opportunities of starting over again. Hey, I, I guess I need to make clear, first of all, what the new birth is not. Hear, hear, hear me clearly, church. The new birth is not baptism. The, the, the new birth is not reformation. The new birth takes place one way and one way only, and that is upon receiving Jesus Christ by faith as your personal Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. That's it. Everything else is works that man does. But only this Jesus can do inside of you, this new birth. John chapter 1, verse 12. What does it say there? For as many as received to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. To who? To as many as received. To them gave he the power to become the sons of God. To experience the new birth. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall never perish but shall have eternal life. My friend, you want to have a happy new year? The new birth is a good way to do that. Things change. You want to change in 2021? That's a change right there, my friend. And I don't know where you're at today in your walk in the Christian life, but listen, if you have never experienced a new birth in Christ, I mean, you may be here today, listen, you may think, you may, you may think, listen, it's not about baptism. It's not about church attendance. It's not about how much money you give. I mean, you may have us fooled, but you don't have God fooled. You understand what I'm saying? 
It's not about works or deeds, lest any man should boast. It's all about a relationship with Jesus. So I don't know, you may be here this morning and, and, and for years you may have just been faking it. You may have been putting on a religious show. You may have just been going through ceremony. But you know in your heart of hearts you don't have the real deal. If that's the case this morning, I'm going to ask you to pray right now. Just go ahead and bow your head, everybody. Let's bow our heads right now. And just say, Jesus, I confess to you today my sins. Father, I know in my heart of hearts that what I have is not real. And Father, today I do want to have a happy new year. And Father, I feel your presence right now calling me at this very moment to accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Jesus, I confess my sins. I ask you now to come into my heart to save me, to change me forevermore. And Jesus, from this moment forward, because you died for me, I want to live for you the best I know. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer, I want to say congratulations. You've experienced a new birth. Now listen, the power is not in the prayer. The power is in meaning it with your whole heart. Amen. And I want to tell you today, if you want to have a happy new year, it can start with the new birth. How else can you have a happy new year? I want to tell you how else you can. With the new walk in Christ. Turn with me to Romans chapter 4. I'm sorry, Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Romans chapter 6, verse 4 says, Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. What does it say, church? Even so we should walk in the what? Newness. The newness of life. You want to have a happy new year? Have a new walk. I am telling you this morning, there is no one more miserable than a believer who doesn't live right. And if you don't believe that, I want to say, don't try it. Because <laughs> it's not fun. When the Holy Spirit lives inside of you and you're not living right, there's conviction going on that'll make you miserable. Amen. I kind of think of it like the three C's. First comes the conviction. If the conviction doesn't get you, you didn't repent from the conviction. From the conviction, then comes the uh, the uh, chastisement. The Bible says, right? He only chastises his own, according to Hebrews. I call it chastisement. That just reminds me of getting a good old whipping from God. Yeah. And then if the chastisement didn't get you, then comes the casket. God says, hey, you're hurting your testimony down here for me. I'll just bring you on home. The sin and the death. There is no one more miserable than a Christian. Or isn't living right, I should say. We can see the contrast between the old walk and the new walk. 
uh, especially over in Galatians. If you want to spin with me over to Galatians chapter 5, it's kind of comparing the flesh and the spirit over there. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 23. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, mischievousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, villains, and such like. Well, I'm just out of breath just reading that list. Of the which I tell you before, I have also told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now look at the contrast, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. And we live in the Spirit. Let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another and envying one another. Do you see the contrast there? Now, I don't know about you, but when I read that second list, it made me a little happier. It made me feel better. I'm going to have a happy new year. Have a new walk. And you know what? If you want to put that into practice to practice the new walk, Really, it's this simple. You've got to feed the new man. You got to feed the new man and not the old man. You ever you remember those old commercials on TV where they had like the, the, the little devil on one shoulder of the person and the and the angel on the other and they'd be kind of warred back and forth. Don't do this, no Jeff, don't do that, you know, but do this, do this. No, 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 you know, like that. Which one of those two are going to win? It's kind of like those two bulldogs that you put in the pen to have that good old bulldog fight. You know which one usually wins that fight? The one you fed the most, the biggest and the strongest. We have got to make sure that we are feeding the new man more than we're feeding the old man. And when we do that, we can walk in the newness of life and experience what Jesus wants us to experience. And we can have a happy new year. So to practice that new walk, listen, we've got to reckon ourselves dead, as Romans said, with Christ and alive with him in Romans chapter 6. I got one more for you if you want to have a happy new year. A new birth will do it. A new walk will do it. Some new goals will do it too. Some new goals. To get to that, I want to turn over to Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. I think Paul probably expressed that better than anybody. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. He's talking about this high calling of God. 
And he says there, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. In other words, I haven't arrived yet, folks. I got a long ways to go. God's still working on me. He said, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I read that and I think about all of Paul's past goals. You know, he was a Pharisee among Pharisees. He says about his own self. He had a lot of high goals in life. He accomplished a lot of those goals in life. What about your past goals? You may have had a lot of accomplishments. A lot of good things happened to you. You know? But along with those past goals, there were a lot of Paul's past sins and failures too, amen? A lot of those things as well. But I have to say, Paul had a lot of good past victories. At this point, Paul had already, when he said this, he had already started some new churches. He had won many souls to Christ, been on missionary journeys. And he still says, I put those things behind me to press on toward the mark. And as I think about that church, it kind of reminds me of what one of my bosses said to me one day. He said one day, he said, Jeff, I know you've done a lot of good things for this company. You had a lot of good accomplishments, but I want to ask you something. What have you done for me today? I think Jesus is asking that same question today. Don't tell me what you did for me yesterday. What are you doing for me today? What are you going to do for me this year? What are you going to do? Or do you have some new goals in your life? Some Christian goals in your life? Where are you going from here today? You see, we can't live in the past, can we? We got to press on. We got to press on, church. We got to keep pressing on. Paul was willing to forget all that may hinder him in his life for Christ. And press on. So I ask you this morning, do you have new goals since you became a Christian? Do you have new goals since you set your last goals? Does that goal have priority in your life? Are you willing to forget the past in order to reach your goal? Could be that the only thing keeping you from reaching that goal is because you're holding on to your past. And folks, I, was, I just want to close this morning for, with, with some awful results of neglecting this truth. Again, I just don't want to be gloom and doom this morning, but I've got to tell you the truth. Some awful results of neglecting this truth for instance, neglecting the truth of the new birth is a soul that's going to continue to be lost and on its way to hell. The awful result of neglecting the truth of the new walk is a testimony that's going to be lost. Because you're not living for and walking with Christ. The awful result of neglecting the truth of the new goal, having no new goals, means that there could have been rewards accomplished because of those goals that you're going to lose. Lost rewards for the kingdom of God. But what are some practical results of acting on these truths? 
salvation. A home in heaven for all eternity with our Heavenly Father. Salvation. Separation. Called out. And by His marvelous grace, set apart, holy unto God. He said we are to be a holy generation. And that's all that means is separate. He separated us out. He called us out from among the world to give us this new life. And then dedication. Faithfulness to achieve those goals. Folks, the joy of living in the center of God's will. <clears throat> Amen.